By the end of this video, you'll know how to do slow motion and fast motion, how to freeze and reverse time. You'll also be a speed ramping genius who knows exactly how to get the smoothest footage possible every time. Welcome to That Da Vinci Project, where we help you unleash your vision on screen, transforming your mind's eye into masterful edits. My name is Liz Martin, and today I'm going to show you how to become masters of time. Okay, first things first. In this video, we're going to be speeding footage up and slowing footage down. So it's very important that you start with the right frame rate. If you don't start with footage that has the right frame rate, when you slow it down, it's going to stutter or look choppy. You see, at a certain point, if the frame rate of the footage isn't high enough as you're slowing the footage down, it will start to create gaps between each frame. And in order to fill in these gaps, the program will simply repeat frames. And that's what causes the choppy look. So how can we avoid this? Simple. We need to make sure that our footage has been recorded in a frame rate that is high enough for our project. In most cases, 60 FPS footage should give you enough frames to work with. If your timeline is 30 FPS, then with 60 FPS footage, you can slow it down by half to 50%. If your timeline is 24 FPS, then with 60 FPS footage, you can slow it down to 40%. Even though 60 FPS footage will work in most cases, there are times that you will need to use footage that has a higher FPS than this. You may need 120 FPS or higher if you're trying to capture faster movements. For example, the flapping wings of a hummingbird, falling snow or rain, the pouring of a drink, video game footage, they all feature fast movements. So keep this in mind. In general, when slowing down footage, the faster something moves, the higher the frame rate you'll need to capture it. If you're working with an unusual or higher frame rate and you want to be precise, then you can always divide the frame rate of your timeline by the frame rate of the footage that you want to slow down and multiply by 100. This will give you the slowest percentage that you can set your footage to without the video becoming choppy. So now that we have the right footage, let me show you what you can do with it. First, we need to let DaVinci know that we want to control the timing of the footage. So right click on the clip and select Retime Controls now we can control the speed of the entire clip. You'll notice a percentage display at the bottom of the clip. Currently, it's set to 100%, and this means that the clip is currently at its original speed. We can change the speed by clicking this small drop-down menu beside the percentage display, hovering over Change Speed, and then selecting a speed from the list. In this example, the frame rate of my timeline is 30 FPS, and the footage that I'm using is 60 FPS, which means that the most I can slow the footage down without it becoming choppy is to 50%. So I'll be careful to not slow it down below that. In this example, I'll start with 150%. But what if you want precise control over the speed of your clip? Simply hover over the top of the clip at either end, and when the double arrow appears, you can click and drag the arrow to the left to increase the speed. Click and drag the arrow to the right to decrease the speed. You'll notice that as we slowed the video down, the arrows changed from blue to yellow. When the arrows are blue, it means that the video is at its original speed or is faster than its original speed. When the arrows are yellow, it means that the video is slower than its original speed. If we want the clip to play in reverse, we can click the drop-down menu and select Reverse Segment. 
you'll notice that the arrows are now pointing to the left. This lets you know that your clip is now set to play in reverse. As you can see, as I play my clip, the dog is running backwards. If you want to remove this reverse effect, simply click the drop down menu and select reverse segment again, and the clip will return to playing forward. Being able to change the speed of the entire clip is useful, but what if we want to add multiple speeds to one clip? No problem. Let's move the red playhead to the frame where we want the speed to change. And then we'll click the drop down menu and select add speed point. I'll move the red playhead to show you what just happened. You'll notice that the clip is now split into two segments. There are now two percentages that can be changed. This means that we can control the speed of each segment individually. Just as we did earlier, we can control the speed by clicking and dragging the top corner of the clip on either side. You'll also notice the speed point that we just created. The speed point has a top and a bottom, or a head and a tail. When you click and drag the top or head of the speed point, it changes the speed of the segment to the left of the speed point. If you change your mind and you want to start the change in speed somewhere else, simply click and drag the bottom or tail of the speed point to the frame where you want the speed to change. As you can see, when we move the tail, it doesn't actually affect the speed of either segment. It only affects the position of where the change in speed occurs. Now that you know how to add speed points and move them around, you can create something called a speed ramp. A speed ramp is when you create a smooth transition between fast motion and slow motion. It's a good way to create a dramatic cinematic effect that highlights specific moments or movements that are happening on screen. In this example, we want to go from fast motion to slow motion and then back to fast motion. And this means we'll need to add another speed point. So we'll move the red playhead to the frame where we want the last change in speed to occur. And then we'll click the drop down menu and add another speed point. Now that we've added another speed point, you'll notice that we have three segments to work with and we can change the speed of each segment separately. In this example, I'll set the speed of the first segment to 400% for fast motion, the middle segment to 50% for slow motion, and the last segment to 400% so that it's back to fast motion. And now we have our speed ramp. Let's play it back to see how it looks. You may notice that the changes in speed look sharp and sudden. If you want the changes in speed to be more smooth or gradual, you'll need to use the Retime Curve Editor. Right-click on the clip, select Retime Curve, and the Retime Curve Editor will appear. You'll see two lines in the Retime Curve Editor, one for Retime Speed, and another for retime frame. We only need to see the line for retime speed. So click this drop down menu and unselect retime frame. Let's click the retime speed line so that we can see all of the speed points that we've created so far. Now, if you look in the middle of the curve editor, you'll see two Beziers. Select a speed point by clicking the dot on the line and you'll notice that currently these speed points are set to the linear Bezier. This straight line means that the changes in speed will be sharp and sudden and this explains why the change in speed currently happens abruptly. 
So how do we make the changes in speed more smooth? Simple. Click a speed point and then select the Ease In, Ease Out Bezier. This curved line means that the change in speed will be more smooth. I'll set the last speed point to the Ease In, Ease Out Bezier also. Let's play it back to see how it looks. Looks good. That's how you make the change in speed more smooth, but how do you make it more gradual? Simple, you can use the Bezier curve handle. It looks like this. If you don't see it, just click the dot and the handle will appear. Click and drag either end of the handle to make the change more gradual. I'll click the first speed point and adjust the Bezier curve handle here as well. Let's play it back to see how it looks. You'll notice that the transition in speed from 400% to 50% is a lot more gradual. If you want an even better understanding of what you can do in the curve editor with Bezier's, then check out our last video where we teach you how to smooth zoom like a pro. Let's say that you want to pause part of your clip. Simply move the playhead to the frame that you want the video to pause on. Then click the drop down menu and select freeze frame. As you can see, when you freeze the frame, red lines appear. You can change the duration of the freeze frame by clicking and dragging the head of the speed point. If you want to remove a speed point, simply click the drop down menu and select clear speed point. If you want to reset the speed of a segment of your clip, click the drop down menu and select reset to 100%. If you want to reset the speed of the entire clip, click the drop down menu and select Reset Clip. What if you have two video clips placed side by side and you want to stretch one of your clips so that it slows down? How do you stretch the video without erasing parts of the other clip? In this case, you would simply select the Trim Edit tool, click the clip that you want to stretch, and then stretch the clip. If you like this video, like it. If you want to be someone else's hero, share it. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. Let us know what you want to see next in the comments.